And I walked over there. And I went past her. And I met my son. He's not my son, but he is. He got right in my face. He was about this far from me. And I let him do that because he's my son. Tears was running down his face. I don't like this. Brother David, could you please help me? And I touched him on the side of the head, just like I did that man right there last night. I said, I'll do my best, son. Yes, sir. Then I walked on past him because she was laying dead right on my supper table. And I looked there on the floor, and right there on the floor was the mother of the baby piled up in a crumpled pile. Now that right there is where Mama's supposed to be. Weeping. Y'all would wish that one of my children would be up there screaming at the devil and ordering a five-minute hamburger. And me, I looked at her, I looked at that baby. I've been to grow me a cow. Whatever it takes and every how long it takes. That's the best I can do. And I walked over there and I checked that kid for myself because, like I said, I'm not a doctor. But I am a good grandpa. And I couldn't find any pulse. I couldn't find any breathing. I couldn't find anything but a dead baby. And I didn't want this to be happening to my off day. Whether it's selfish or not, it's still, I didn't want it to be happening. I wish I had my boots on. I didn't. Wish I had my shirt on. I didn't. I grabbed that little baby's foot in my hand. And I flipped it up in the air and it just boom back on the table. So I started walking around my supper table, dragging my hands on it, speaking in tongues. Big old table because I feed lots of people every meal. Went around that table, came back to her. She was still the same as I left her. And that went on round after round after round. The clock started moving. My wife was watching and praying. My other kids were all there praying. And I turned and looked at them. I said, you ain't got faith for this. Talking to my kids. Get out of my house. So I kept walking and praying. And after about an hour and something went by, it was a long time to me. I went around there and kicked that foot up in there, just like every other time. But this time, she took a deep breath and started crying. She came back to us. We were all happy. She's safe. They carried her to the uh, emergency deal. They checked her out. She's safe. She had that, uh, what's that called? That uh, tosferina. What is that? Uh, hooping call. <clears throat> but now she's safe. She's nice. She's a beautiful little old girl. Runs around. She's healed. That's nice. You have to understand something. That was, the, that was the middle of a battle that I didn't tell you about the beginning of. I lost one of my wife's best friends. Got killed when I was in Australia. That was the first thing that happened. She called me. I don't know. We still don't know how. Out now, I was in the outback out in the about 500 miles south of Ayers Rock. I was with Aboriginal people. And I don't know how she got through because there's no cell service. But it came through anyway on the uh, lead pastor's phone. She told me that Ms. Ellie had died. That's one of my elders' wives, missionaries that worked with me. And uh, I was pretty astounded. And she made a statement to me there also. She said, if you had been here, Things would be different. 
You know, and, and that's that's a you, you have to understand. You know, I didn't rebuke her or nothing. I did, I just told her, no, ma'am, that's not right. It's because Jesus is there. It's not about me being there. You have the same Jesus I do. Now act like it. Get after it. Let's go here. Sort of encouraging her to step into it a little deeper and harder, and because she was feeling like she had. Uh, She had not been qualified for the job. And uh, so I had to go and tell the man was with me, her husband, the woman that was dead, was with me in Australia. And I walked straight in there and looked him right in the face and told him his wife was dead. He hit me, knocked me almost through a wall. <clears throat> That's a bad feeling. So when you see me in a minute having fun in the Holy Ghost, let me dance, will you? <laughs> it's pretty hard, some of this stuff. And so he, uh, I went to the elders. All the elders were there. We woke up. We had a prayer meeting. and Still, we didn't get her up from the dead. And uh, <clears throat> So they released me to come back. We had a lot of things going. I, had to, I came back with him. I ain't going to tell you the story. It was amazing. A 22-hour ride on a jet turned into 72-hour or something hours. It was amazing hate of the enemy. Every jet we got on died right on the tarmac, and it was it was, it was horrendous. And then we went. Another one of my pastors got shot behind the ear twice. He got uh, killed, and we didn't get him back either. And uh, so we buried these people, and then. My granddaughter, we got her back. So it was three in a matter of a couple of weeks. We were under siege. The Bible says now faith is. It didn't change when Ms. Ellie died. I did. God did. It didn't change when my most Awesome pastor, young guy, doing great. When he got shot, and he didn't come back from the dead. Now faith didn't change. Are you hearing me? Okay. We prayed for my grandbaby. We got her back. Now faith was the same then as it was the other times. You hear me? Time goes by. We went under siege financially. We went under siege in the minute we were being crushed. And I told my wife, I'd rather die than bow. If I lose everybody and I'm the last one to be taken out, I'll do it with a shout. Because now faith is. What I see is not relevant. What God's Word says is all that's relevant. What you see, how you view it, how you perceive it, doesn't make deadly to me. Or God. All of a sudden, uh, during this time, right after that, there was a process going on in my... My body went under siege, personally. Seven demons came. Incurable diseases. I fought them for five years. During this siege, and I thought I was going to make it. <laughs> I didn't make it. I was out in the village one night and I, I was hurt exceptionally. My, there was all kind of things. Everything, even just about every major organ on me wasn't working. And I was going anyway. I was trying to be, now faith is. And I was trying to, regardless of the situation and the circumstances and the attitude of even my own workers and